quarter of a mile, sharp right turn. If you follow the RX 450H Lexus Lumber, as it directs you from South Weber to Hill Air Force Base Museum, you will get hybrid gas mileage, but you'll probably get arrested when it tells you to drive across the secure part of the base. Aside from that, it's the solid best seller it's always been. The Elantra Hyundai Londas is all new and a little bigger. You don't usually see radar cruise control in a smaller car. Nor can you skate up and the trunk pops automatically. That's new exciting stuff for this segment. So what's not that exciting, not all that original and kind of old, besides me, the trapezoidal grille. Imitation is the greatest form of flattery. Audi claims they started the trapezoidal grille 100 years ago. It really is an Audi design element that we've been tweaking and modifying and adjusting. And how about those LED lights that are on the Elantra, RX, and almost everything else these days? We were 100% uh, the first with LEDs. And if you think about it, what most people call them now is less LED lights. They call them Audi lights, a piece of technology that we innovated, a piece of technology we launched, and now everyone's copied. Lexus might counter that even if they adopted LEDs, the original RX invented the whole luxury SUV segment. Um, thank you. To which Audi's North American president claims they are the parents in the room and the kids will soon copy their new virtual cockpit. I assure you, in the next three to four years, someone's going to sit behind the wheel of a Lexus or a BMW and they're going to say, ah, cool, that's got Audi's virtual cockpit. But the truth is, you want to get the real one, come to Audi. And if you can't afford Audi, come to Hyundai. And if you want to come to the museum, come I-15. Brian Champagne, Fox 13 News, Utah. Two roads diverged on a yellow hill, and sorry I could not travel both. I took the other because it was rockier and wanted wear. And with the selectable terrain knob, climbed fair. And hill descent helped my passing there. The road was less traveled because it led to a bigger hill. The Cherokee worked a little harder and got up still. The other road led to red lights, but the Jeep shuts off to save gas. No point in running while you sit on your brake. It works on the road very traveled, too. Our loner lifted its own gate, had decent space, and cute Jeep grates that don't match the front it selects, but it runs apps what are you working on? and it reads text. The 3.2 liter doesn't sound mad, and with nine gears, mileage is not bad for a Jeep. The little Cherokee must think it queer to not have to stop without a farmhouse near between a fire and the fire trucks on the brightest morning of the year, which showed it's green in shade like soot, a nod to its military roots and its 75th anniversary. It will carry my stuff and take it away and open up to let in the day and take me up hills very steep for I have miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Brian Champagne, Fox 13 News, Utah. This is a vintage trailer rally. We've got people from Wyoming, Montana, Colorado, and a lot of people from here in Utah. This is a 1965 Chevy truck and I pull a 1967 Aristocrat Lowliner. I like the memories it brought back, like the Rafink, I remember those. Put whole new interior in it, air conditioning, microwave, complete sound system, flat screen TV. On Nikki, please. These older trailers, I just think they're so much fun. Our, our bathroom's on the same side. I've painted this. it and put the signs on there. I made my curtains inside and the seat cushions. Oh, cute. I've always been a hippie. <laughs> Grew up in the 70s. We have a 1952 Silver Street. This ice box, you just put chunks of ice in, like back in the old days where they used to deliver the ice. It's a 1978 Rancho El Rey. This is 70s. I'm going to Grandma's avocado green. This is Dottie. She's our 1969 Santa Fe. We've got a pink macrame frog. We've got the Lucite Grandma grapes. In general, it's kind of a mushroom and flower power theme. Vintage trailers and vintage cars and furniture all go together. Wow, <laughs> darling. It's more of a hot rod trailer, and they kind of nicknamed it the Rockabilly trailer. This is a 1966 Fireball Meteor. The interior of it's got that early 60s Jetsons styling to it. 
<laughs> the girls brought me to give me a little taste of the bug here. We like the decorations, the bright colors, and all the bedding. It just looks happy and it's fun. We've actually had a few of our own. I like getting them just because of the fact that when I see something that's old and run down, I like to see it brought back to something beautiful. It's the same year and model that Johnny Cash and June Carter toured in. <laughs> it's just been a wonderful turnout. We have met the nicest people. We'll put these blues on a There it is, stocking in the canyon. The GS Lexus loaned us. It has leather trim seats, a clock, and a dial you can use to select driving modes. And when the dial goes to the far right, you get a thing we'll call beast mode. Lexus calls it Sport S Plus. The GSF gets louder, more responsive, the traction and stability programs up their game, and you get an 8-speed, 469 horsepower Canyon Blast. And if you think all this is pretty beasty, check this one out. Mercedes lent us an AMG C63S Coupe. Dial in what you want from its suspension, transmission, exhaust, and handling program and it gets loud and angry, but not at you. 503 horsepower could make trouble, but it has the tech to keep you between the lines. Stuff like brakes bigger than some car's wheels, twin turbo hand-built engine, and just crazy power. Both cars can be like pit bulls pulling on their leashes, but both can be dialed down to civilized lap dogs with nice luxury features and nice trunk space. The bends will even go silent at red lights to save gas. But step on the gas and wake it up and it's back on the leash pulling and howling at the moon. Brian Champagne, Fox 13 News, Utah. This is Tom Harris's 87 wagon. I inherited it from my dad. Seats eight or carries lots of stuff. Very versatile. Engine under a hood in the front, two rows of seats, and either a third row or a big cargo area in the back, followed by an easy access hatch. This was a handy combination for the 1987 Ford Country Squire wagon and today. The Acadia GMC loaned us is that same layout. Sure, it adds stuff like parking sensors and cameras, and it looks more truck than car-like, but it's the same idea. You can haul stuff in it, you can uh, take many passengers in it, rides real smooth. Tom's talking about his wagon, but the Acadia does all that and adds easier folding seats to make a cargo area like a wagon and some underfloor storage. If you need to turn around and yell at your kids, it'll help you stay in your lane and not hit what's in front of you. It also tells you the weather and you can dial in the crossover's response. It holds wet roads well. Tom says the GMC is too small to compete against his Ford, and it doesn't even offer fake wood. But we're getting there. Brian Champagne, Fox 13 News, Utah.